What happened to the IGG? Why don't some of the victims of these corruption cases report them to the office of the IGG? Are her staff credible? Those are just some of the things that the president of this country asked about the IGG during his State of the Nation address for this year 2018. He called into question the performance of the IGG in her fight against corruption. He also announced the creation of an inspection unit at State House to help in the fight against corruption. This change of strategy breeds a new question. What can the people of Uganda and the government of Uganda do to curb this ever-growing vice of corruption? My name is Seboa Samuel Bunya, and this is Face the Citizens. This is Face the Citizens. I am Seboa Samuel Bonya, and today we are discussing corruption. I am joined by a panel of distinguished guests, and I am going to introduce them, starting from my extreme left, where we have the chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament, Honorable Osege Angelin. Welcome to Face the Citizens, Honorable. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here, and good afternoon, viewers. Right next to me, on my left, is Honorable Father Simon Lokodo, the State Minister for Ethics and Integrity in the Office of the President. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. To my right, it's Sisi Kagaba of the Anti-Corruption Coalition of Uganda. Welcome to Face the Citizens. Thank you very much. And uh, good evening to all the listeners. On my extreme right, is Mr. Vincent Mugabo, the PRO in the judiciary. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. To kick off today's discussion, I am going to start with you, Honorable Okodo. We know one of the things that came out of the State of the Nation address was the creation of this inspection unit within State House. But we have had a lot of complaints about various organizations duplicating each other's work. Don't you think, aren't you, aren't you worried by this duplication, Honorable? Absolutely no. I want to admire and surely appreciate the sensitivity and the consciousness of the appointing authority who, in the exercise of his duty, wants to ensure that there is a wider coverage of the presence of both human resource as well as the technical know-how in the fight against this graft. So for me, I am not saying it has a duplication. On the contrary, it is the strengthening of the already existing institutions. To you, Honorable Osege, in her report, her biannual report that she delivered, to the Speaker of Parliament earlier this year, the IGG complained about having over 4,600 unresolved complaints, most of them to do with corruption. As the Parliament of Uganda, what are you doing to support her in her fight against corruption? Well, thank you so much. Um, as Parliament of Uganda, there is a committee that is charged with the responsibility of looking at uh, the reports of the Inspector General of Government and that is the Committee on Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. Whatever report the IGG produces is supposed to be looked at by that committee, and then they advise the House, and then we take decisions accordingly. However, when you talk about the backlog of the, of the work that the IGG is supposed to do, being 4,600 cases, there are many reasons for that. One of them is that uh, I think the office of the IGG is understaffed. Two, it is underfunded. Three, it is, it is not being allowed to operate independently. If the IGG gets hold of a case, depending on who it is, uh, a big fish, so to say, you'll find telephone calls coming to her and telling her not to handle certain people the way she ought to handle them, according to the law. So she is not free to do what she's supposed to do as provided for in the law. There's a lot of interference on top of being underfunded and understaffed. 
there's a lot of interference. No, but you see, Honorable Sege, you're saying that there's a lot of interference. So as an arm of government, what is parliament doing to address this issue of interference? You know, you, you would say parliament, uh, I don't want to talk like we're operating under a normal situation. You will look at parliament as an institution of government, but it doesn't operate the way it's supposed to operate. Because parliament is supposed to be independent as an arm of government. But that is not what we see. And also the decisions so made by Honorable parliament. So, Honorable you're saying that the parliament of Uganda is not a normal parliament. It's not the parliamentarians representing the views of the ordinary Ugandans down there that voted them into parliament? No, it is not, and I'll say that without shame because we have seen it, we have experienced it, we have seen it. I, I mean, it is not something that is hidden again to Ugandans. So unless parliament resumes its position, assumes its powers as provided for in the constitution, we will continue not to perform to the expectations of Ugandans. All right, I would like to bring in Sisi Kagaba of Anti-Corruption Coalition. Yes, we might say the IGG's office like the president. Yes, the parliament might come up with its uh, reasons for why the corruption fight is going as it is going. But the constitution mandates citizens in Article 17.1i to fight corruption. What are citizens in Uganda actually doing to help in this fight against corruption? All right, thank you very much. I think. We need to look at uh, quite a number of issues. The first one, because when you ask what are the citizens doing, I think it, it's going to go back to what the president said. Well, I think to some extent I'm going to agree with him when he says that people don't trust the IG. Now, if people don't trust, those are the people who should actually be uh, probably reporting issues. But when we talk of trust, we can't only look at the IG's office. Do people actually trust the government? I think for me that's a question that we need to ask ourselves. By and large, if you look at the bigger and wider citizenry, do people actually trust their government? Do people trust the three arms of government? So if people don't, do pe I mean, like the, the Honorable has actually said, that probably parliament is operating in an abnormal situation. Now, if parliament is operating like that, they, then do the citizens actually trust the members of parliament that are actually representing them? Do people actually trust the judiciary? Do people actually trust uh, cabinet? I think for me those are things that we need to ask ourselves. And then going back to, to, to what the, the, the issue of the citizens, if this three-man committee was put in place, are citizens going to report to, to the three-man committee or they're going to continue reporting to the IGG's office? And again, just to disagree with the Honorable Minister, you see, when you create parallel uh, ed entities, we're actually weakening because we have the constitution. The constitution is very clear. It lays down the mandate of the, of the IG. I was interacting with Mr. Tohe and he actually told me that he didn't know what his terms of reference were. He didn't know what his key KPI or key performance indicators were. And again, we need to ask ourselves, what is this three-man committee going to do where the IG has actually filled with um, staff of over 400? So I, I would like to ask you, Sisi. Yes, you're talking about all this, but what are the values of the citizens of Uganda? Can you tell us what those values, in your opinion, what are they? Of course, when you're talking about values, you're talking of issues about transparency, integrity. I mean, the values are bigger and wider. They're do quite we a number. have them as Ugandans? Of course, we do have those values. But the other issue that we need to ask ourselves, the people that we have in these particular offices, where are they coming from? Are they coming from Mars? Are they coming from a different planet? Or they're still part and parcel of the system? And as long as they're part and parcel of the system, these are our relatives, these are our brothers, these are our sisters. So I think for me, we, we cannot forget the whole issue of the value. And if we're saying that these are our relatives and again you're creating another unit alongside another unit are we saying that this unit has more values than this other one that is constitutionally mandated and again we need to ask ourselves if the president says that the IG has failed the bigger picture is probably the entire government has failed because the IG is not a standalone the IG works with other government entities all right now I would like to bring in Mr. Vincent Mugawo the PRO in the judiciary uh, I would want to know Mr. Vincent why is it that the fight against corruption seems to be getting worse in Uganda? Because if we look at the index, Uganda still remains about among the most corrupt countries in the world. Um, thank you very much for that concern. The biggest concern is not that the corruption is getting worse. It is us, the citizens, who are either getting worse, who are corrupting the government officials. Where are these corrupt people coming from? They are members of our community. Either we have become more greedy, either we have become more selfish, 
We do not care about the health service. We do not care about the education service and all these services, that social services that we are supposed to get to. So now, when the community becomes greedy, when the community becomes complacent, then the problem of corruption will rise. So of course, as agencies which fight corruption, we all have a stake to play, but also the citizenry have a lot Doesn't of stake Doesn't that to play. mean that there's a problem with the temple of justice, you the judiciary, if corruption just keeps escalating as it is? The corrupt, in most cases, come to our courts as a final person to make a decision on whether somebody is corrupt or not. We are not involved in the markets where there is corruption. We are not involved in churches where there is corruption. Father, you'll agree with me that even in churches there is corruption. In every sector of the community, the judiciary is not there. The judiciary is one arm of government which is fed in at the last moment. But sir, moment. I to ask you, haven't you heard of cases where court officials are being bribed in order for certain things to go through? That is, a, that is a fact. We cannot deny that we have some form of corruption, but that corruption is in two times. One, there are those who come actually to bribe judicial officers, and I sit on the bench, so I know those incidents happen, but those people are coming from the same community that we serve. But also, we have not sensitized enough as judiciary for people to understand the pro court processes, and any delay in that system somebody will think that is a corrupt tendency. So those, those are the main uh, ways in which we are accused of corruption as judiciary. Okay, Honorable Minister, something that comes out from all the panelists here has to do with the integrity of people. As the Honorable Minister of State for Ethics and Integrity, what are you doing to restore the integrity amongst Ugandans? I want to completely and also agree with my panelists on this assumption that the area of corruption, the trigger of corruption is actually the populace. I am very strong on this. Corruption is not in the country because of the corrupt. Because of those who know, watch, see the corrupt doing their things and do nothing about it. Abraham Lincoln once said that evil is in the world not because of the evil, but because of those who watch that evil happen and do nothing about it. So I want to throw a big blame to my citizenry. Apathy is the worst vice that you can ever live with. Apathy means tolerance, forbearance, complacency, accepting. You know there is a scenario called a path harder, poisonous, but, and without but the But honorable reverse. minister, honorable minister, are you agonizing along with Ugandans, yet it is your duty as the minister to provide practical solutions? What practical solutions do you have? Listen, what I'm saying is, there must be a responsible response also on the part of the citizens. Yes, it is my duty. And indeed, the responsibility of the direct ethics and integrity is to empower Ugandans to uphold moral, moral values and principles. And indeed, I go out, I use all fora to sensitize Ugandans on rediscovering our values which we have lost. I have come up with national ethical values policy, which stipulates 10, policy, 10 values, which if all Ugandans have held and cherished, certainly certain evils that we are hearing about would find their way out of our society. But because these values, unfortunately, Can, can I ask fallen. if that policy is available to the public? Yes, it is. And indeed, we spend a lot of time going out to reach the populace and disseminate this. Okay, well, we shall address that when we come back. But before we go into the break, I would like to ask the, the audience, have you seen this policy he's talking about? Have you? Yes. 
Oh, okay, there's a yes somewhere there. We're going for a short break, but we will be back for Face the Citizens. Welcome back to Face the Citizens. My name is Seboa Samuel Bunya, and today we are discussing corruption and how this vice is eating up our country. I am joined by my four guests here, and to, and to start off this segment, we're going to speak to someone from Uganda Debt Network who has a question that she wants to ask, preferably about the submissions from the panelists. Thank you very much. My name is Christine Birinchiro from Uganda Debt Network. And uh, I would love to ask uh, the Honorable Angeline Osege about uh, the Auditor General reports. We usually follow these reports. And when we want to follow up on the recommendations, because they make key recommendations, especially on recovery of resources, on uh, culpable uh, individuals, they always tell us that uh, the Parliament committees uh, PAC as well is part of that, take long to discuss the findings and uh, to maybe implement the recommendations of the, IG of the Auditor General. So I want to know is that the reason why, you know, we see some of these uh, offenses, some of these corrupt practices, uh, you know, like coming back and forth and again. All right, so maybe Honorable Osege, maybe you can answer her question. Then we'll get another question from the audience. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Uganda Debt Network. Um, you are asking about the delay in handling the reports of the Auditor General, if it's the reason why there is recurrent corruption. One thing I want to tell you that yes, there has been a delay, but also we need to realize that when the Auditor General produces a report, the institutions are given individual institutional reports and they are mandated to act on them even before PAC produces their report because it becomes a public document and it is a report of the institution. So they are not supposed to wait for Public Accounts Committee to produce its report. But what it's supposed to be, the way it's supposed to be done is that every year, executive is supposed to produce, or Minister of Finance, produce a treasurer memoranda in response to the, to the reports of the Public Accounts Committee, telling us what they have done, what they haven't done, and why they haven't done it. And then the Auditor General is supposed to audit it again. So what I'm trying to say is that um, there is just lack of willingness. Because if somebody needs to correct a situation that is prevailing in their institution, once the Auditor General's report comes out, they should implement those recommendations. Because ours may be higher, we are talking about prosecute, do this, do that. But the beginning to correct the situation begins with the report of the Auditor General. And I think the public can also access the Treasury Memoranda because they are public documents. In the audience, there's a, a certain gentleman, Mr. Apollo Chibera, a prominent member of the National Resistance Movement, and he aspired to be the Secretary General of this party. I would like to ask Mr. Apollo Chibera, wherever you're seated, whether you believe that the movement, the NRM's policies in fighting corruption will actually work, or if they are even working. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Really, we are disappointed a bit that this is the government, which I support, I'm a member. When we reach uh, the belief like Father, like Father Okodo, who they believe that there is life after death, when we s the government start appointing people who are dead as other deceased, really, as a government to appoint somebody who died in 2016, right now in 2018, without having a such a research, though that the, they have a member who have died in that lineage, and reappoint when there's other people with the qualifications with everything and they're jobless and they're on the streets but the government real <laughs> then the government i think they should correct at uh, this era 
we are not uh, starting even... A so why exactly are you still with the NRM? Why are you still a prominent member and a strong supporter of the NRM if you don't believe <laughs> in the us, Thank you very much. It us who are there to revive. All right, Apollo. We have heard. We hear you. That's a very good contribution. Uh, I would like to ask a question to Mr. Vincent Mugabo. Um, Sisi mentioned something about new forms of corruption. What are you as a judiciary doing to get yourselves ready for this ever-evolving monster of corruption? Because there are different kinds of corruption coming up each and every other day. Um, thank you for the intervention. Yes, it is uh, very true that now the normal briberies and solicitations are no longer happening. Because we have gone ICT, we have gone IT, and therefore there are more challenges. Challenges both to the judiciary, challenges both to the prosecuting bodies like the IGG and uh, the DPP who are involved in prosecuting of these matters. Even the police to investigate uh, these matters, for instance, those which are related to technology, IT. Uh, what we are doing as a judiciary is uh, ensuring that our judicial officers who are involved are trained in the new schemes that are happening on a yearly basis. And they, we are also calling upon the other agencies, like the DPP, IGG, and police, to also involve their officers to train in the new trends of corrupt-related uh, tendencies. So that's what we are doing as uh, an institution to ensure that we are upbeat with those people who are involved in such offenses. All, all right. Uh, Honorable Sege, I would like to ask you, apathy seems to be the theme of the day. Just how important is public trust in this fight? against corruption? Um, I think that public, in, public trust is so important, so much so that it draws somebody to take the initiative to realize that there is someone who can attend to their problem. Now, we have noted that people do not report cases in spite of having a hotline because they know that even if they report, nothing is going to happen. And so for you to have the cycle complete, Trust must be there. Someone must be sure that there is going to be a positive result in their, um, in their move to report anything to anybody. Now, many times the people that we are supposed to report to are actually the people who are perpetrating corruption. Now, you begin to think, now if I report to this person, one, I am going to be a victim because there will, a demand will be put on me to do something before I'm attended to. And so what would you do? Because you are going to, it, you, it is going to be double jeopardy. You are going to lose, uh, you are not going to be attended to, but also you are going to lose resources. So what do you do? You sit back. At least you lose once, you don't lose twice. So that is the problem. Once there is no trust, people must know that if I raise my issue, someone is going to attend to it without putting a cost to it. All right, Honorable. Uh, Sisi, I would like to ask you a question. In your opinion, is the law a problem? The current law of Uganda, the constitution, is it a problem in the fight against corruption? The law, the way it is, I, it's very okay. And as you're aware is that Uganda has a, well, a robust legal and institutional framework. We actually have one of the very best laws. And of course, we need, give to, we need to give credit to our government. When it comes to enacting laws, actually we perform very, very well. So the issue, I think, is not even the laws, but the issue is enforcement of these laws. There's an IG report that was done some time back, and it was trying to look at um, the law vis-a-vis -vis enforcement. And I think when the report was out, it showed that uh, we performed highly, I think over 90% when it comes to the number of laws that we have. But when it came to enforcement, our enforcement was very, very poor. So the challenge has never been the law. Yes, just like any legal regime, there may be, you know, what you call lacuna as a loopholes, but those per se cannot say or cannot mean that they are drawback to the fact against corruption the problem has always been enforcement or at times you have selective enforcement of these laws all right Sissy, thank you very much now I'm, I'm going to pick someone in the audience the gentleman in a red tie to ask a question to our panelists right here in in, in the red tie thank you <clears throat> my name is Eric Quizera I come from Kisoro um, I thank you everybody for being here 
My questions are two. They go to especially to the Honorable Osege. Just, just ask one. Pick the, the one that you really, really want answered. Okay. Um, the most important thing I wanted to say is that of all what is happening, let's say I come from Kisoro. I come here to deal with issues to, like, with public office, uh, internal affairs issues. And when I come here, I find that these institutions of government I come from far, I'm forced to come to the immigration office, I'm forced to come to NIRA, but they still have to take me for a long time to, to deal with these issues. You know, like, it is going to be three weeks, or it's going to be a month, or if not, you can pay us so much so that you can, we can deal with it within a day or two. You know, like, that is already corruption. So if I'm able to, I would pay them so much so that I'm able to get that thing and, you know, cut my expenses and go. What I'm appealing to these, uh, to the members of parliament is that, can, oh, do you know about all these issues? Maybe can we transfer these services of institutions of okay. government to the, uh, the, so the, the I local I d destinations? You know, I, like I, I believe all you're talking regions. about decentralization, decentralization and, and, and efficiency. That's right, yes. And that's mainly a question for the government here. But that will be a question that will be answered after this short break. Stay tuned to face Thank the citizens. You. Welcome back to Face the Citizens. My name is Seboa Samuel Bunya. And as usual, we are talking about issues that affect the citizens of Uganda. Today we are talking about corruption. And before we went for the break, one member in the audience brought an issue concerning inefficiency within the system, the call for decentralization as well. And he was addressing it to Honorable Osege. Honorable Osege, what is your response to that audience member's query? In uh, a normal, serious government, citizens don't even have to request for that. It's provided for. It's supposed to be the way to do things. Just like we are causing districts to mushroom in every sub-county. We are supposed, in the same way, to devolve these government institutions and offices nearer to the people, as near as possible. But my worry is we shall also be decentralizing corruption. We first need to handle the issue of corruption. Have we cleaned up before we do that? If we do that before cleaning up, we are just decentralizing corruption. So I, I want to think that let's first deal with the issue of our own integrity before we, we do that. But in the normal running of government, that is what it should be. But let me tell you something. There is no institution of government in Uganda that is 100% to its uh, uh, level of employees. There is none. All of them are operating below 50%. So when you see that level of inefficiency, you don't even expect that institution, institutions to expand up country. Because where they are, they don't have enough employees. Because there is a recruitment ban on employees, as uh, much as Ugandans are unemployed. So how do you devolve institutions? You don't want to employ Ugandans. But also worse still is because of the corruption that is prevalent. So let's first deal with the corruption. All right, Honorable, thank you very much. Now, Apollo Chibira, a prominent member of the NRM party, he's in here and he has said that the NRM government is just not working. And that's an indictment on the NRM government and on you, Honorable Minister, who's a part of this government. What do you have to say about his indictment and what are you doing to change that perception about the party and the government? Thank you very much, and I want to thank the audience, and particularly my brother, for bringing that situation in the limelight. May I also take this opportunity and advantage to respond to what my sister was supposed to answer in relation to decentralization, or better, service delivery. I want to sympathize with my brother and many other Ugandans who travel distances in order to get services, but end up not getting those services because some citizens are just irresponsible. 
instead of providing services for which, by the way, they are even paid for remunerated for, they want to extort. So my brother there could have been told to come three weeks later because he was not in a position to give something that could expedite the process of him getting whatever document he wanted. This is again the very reason why you and me should shout aloud, condemn Shan and really uh, tell corruption. That's to still get out an of indictment, mind. as Apollo Chibira said. Yes, on that's the government. So what are you doing that's what to I'm change saying. that? As government, we are putting it all into our structures and how our implementation agencies to ensure that this graft is not spared at whatever level. So right now, the institutions of government that we have in place, actually there are 18 altogether which form the interagency forum, whose role and function is above all to ensure that there is accountability in the service delivery of citizens. Unfortunately, there are some irresponsible citizens who hide behind being affiliates of NRM and perform negatively to the detriment of the image of NRM, right? So I want to clear that perception, which is not per se true, that the NRM has failed. How far have we brought this country into almost sublimity? Okay, uh, honorable. I now, want you to appreciate this fact. Honorable. That a lot has happened in these last 32 years, 33 years, to the extent that now you can sit tranquilly and say anything honorable, about this Honorable, we are talking thing. about corruption. And, 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 and before, b before we continue, I would like to ask Sisa. Sisa, do you agree with the honorable minister that they have really <laughs> done a lot in this fight against corruption? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Certain things. Be, okay, one, I, I was reading the budget speech, <laughs> and w one of the things that the minister, Honorable Minister, that was reading the speech on behalf of the president was to say, We're going to ruthlessly uproot. He kept on talking of ruthlessly uprooting, and these corrupt officials, and it goes back to the minister. I mean, like you're rightly saying, go back to the 10 point program. Point number seven, why the current regime is in power and over, overthrew the other regime that was in power. Point number seven was to fight corruption. Now, I find it weird that. I don't know how many years down the road you're still talking of ruthlessly uprooting people that are within your same government to fight corruption. I, I, I find it um, a bit weird. Then I, I liked what, again, Honorable has talked about, the implementing agencies. But the same implementing agencies are being discredited by the president by saying the IGG is not working. Th that's why he decided to create a parallel, say, a parallel uh, unit. So when we're talking of implementing agencies, are they actually fighting the vice or they're also part and parcel uh, of, the, of the problem? And it's, I mean, it's very surprising. I mean, when it comes to the laws, our government has done so well. The issue of tranquility, people sitting here, but I mean, if you were to ask how many of them actually have jobs, I mean, because again, tranquility shouldn't just be a matter of people coming and sitting here. But I think we need to widen it. And again, if you're talking of tranquility right now within the country, th that, that again, I think for me is a bit debatable. But I think for me, the bigger issue should be what can you do? You know, there was a time during the... There's a certain president, uh, state of national address where the president said that I know ministers that are asking for money from investors. The president actually promised to take action against those ministers. We haven't, and let us not talk of cover phones, like which ones, because we don't know them honorable. And I think for me that's where the <laughs> challenge is. Because we need to see some of this, uh, the president saying that I know these people who are taking money from my investors. We would have expected within that year to see who these ministers are. And again, when the same president castigates the IG, yet the same president knows some of his ministers that are taking corruption and it's not taking action against those same ministers, and then you castigate the IG for not working, I think we still have a problem. All right. Uh Honorable Okoda, you have to respond to this. You have to respond to this because there are many examples of these big weeds. What happens? Indeed, I am here to correct that perception. <laughs> it's just a perception. <laughs> Is it a perception? Because it's, it's a, a perception. Some truth could be born inside there, but the real reality and the great fact is this, that the NRM government, she just mentioned the nine-point program, the presence and the establishment of institutions that are there to fight but corruption. Honorable Okuda, you're not the very strong. I'm, I'm moving there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the excellent legal framework that we have in order to fight corruption, all right? All this tell you that there is the intent to fight corruption. Now, the 
story has been that we have been handling corruption with very soft hands and that we were treating corruption cases with some reservations where we were handling the small and leaving untouched the big. Is that when you talk about the big fish, etc. Right now, I'm telling you, at least in my regime, since I started coordinating government's efforts against corruption, there is no single case where I have not reprimanded even a person of the highest caliber in government for actually being mentioned corrupt. You know that we had to take all vice president of this country to courts of law. All you right. know that ministers had to go through courts of law. And you know that recently we asked one minister to step aside. All and right. we know there are ministers who have been stripped of their duties because of their being suspected or being corrupt. All right. Say, All right. Honorable to minister. To say, but we Honorable are minister. there. You're saying a lot. We have heard you. And I'm sure the audience has heard you. And I'm sure there is a reaction from the audience. But please put up your hand if you have a question or if you have a reaction to what the Honorable Minister is just saying. They're very happy, these people, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the lady seated right there in a checkered uh, dress. Please tell us your name before you ask your question. Thank you very much. I'm called the Olinga Jessica Odeke. I'm a student of uh, Gallup Initiative Uganda. It is located in Chirombe and I'm a, a mother as well. My question goes to Honorable Okodo. I remember in 2014, there was a case about, of course it was, it is corruption. That case was, uh, was from UTL Uganda, where my husband used to work. And that case, it was raised in the parliament by Honorable M Nandala M Mafabi, and they promised that they would follow up that case so that uh, those employees will get, will get their money from NSSF. But that case has died up to now. We, don't, we actually don't know what is happening, what is going on. And the other guys, they just set them free. They went and our families and remained suffering till today. So Mr. Honorable Okodo, I want to know how far has that case gone? Thank you. I, I think that uh, that question. I would like to ask. I would like to ask. Is there another question in the audience? Yes, the lady seated right next to you in glasses. And please be precise. Your name and your question to the point. Okay, I'm called Goretti. I'm from Chirombe. I'm one of the citizens seated here. Um, my question goes to any of the two member of parliament. Um, my brother has been chasing for my father's pension. Eh? And each time he goes, they tell him that the file is, is pushed to another, another office. And if you want, it, want us to handle it, pay us this sum of money, and then we handle it for you. This guy gives, him, gives them the money, but up to today, as I talk right now, the case has not been handled, and we have not gotten any feedback from them. So I don't know what, what is going to happen afterward. All right, thank you. Now, Honorable Osege, with your concluding remarks, use 30 seconds to respond to that lady and 30 seconds to give your concluding remarks as well. Thank you so much. I, I just want to say that um, the issue of pension has been such a pain in the necks of Ugandans. And uh, while it has been decentralized, I, I think that uh, the, record, the records were not straight right from the beginning. But also in public accounts committee, we have witnessed most ministries are misusing this money for pension. When their budget is short and there is money for pension, that is the one they mischarge to do other activities, orders from above. There is this function, they need money, they will run for pension money. And uh, I also still want to say that it, it is well a citizen is supposed to follow up. When things are working well, an institution knows that they have the following citizens who are about to retire, they need to have their pension. Things are done early, in time. 
the moment they need their pension, it should be available. There is no reason for a citizen to begin moving up and down, say following their pension, when they have had a file with this institution for the years they have worked with that, with that institution. So I find that in itself very erroneous. But anyhow, this is our country. Just keep following up, but also give us that information. Give us the information and the details. Probably we can see how to to check on what is going on. All right, but I know that that is a problem. But uh, as uh, Ugandans, thank you very much. Maybe your conclusions. <laughs> so, Honorable Simon Lokodo, please give us your conclusions in thirty seconds and maybe thirty seconds to respond to what the lady asked as well. Yes, um, on the lady's question, UTL. Unfortunately, I don't have in my immediate response the story but what i know is when that case came government took responsibility ensured that those who were responsible were first of all put of action and then these particular beneficiaries who were denied of their rights were supposed to be you know supplied the services they required and i am only learning that it was not come. It was not attended to. This is an opportunity for me because it is also in my docket to follow up complaints of this type. By the way, whenever you have a case of dissatisfaction in that category, you can call to me and I will be of help or contribute to finding a solution to that. Oh. Even in the failure of performance of the institutions of government supposed to help you, in your struggle. You see, for example, Inspector of Government or the Direct Public Prosecution or, or I don't know, the in, uh, Criminal Investigation or PPDA. Which of those institutions fails to perform as per your expectation? You report to us and we shall provide you a solution. All right. Thank you very much. Honorable in Lokoda. conclusion, I really want to thank the citizens of this country they are represented by this particular team. For the spirit, the intention, and the will to really air out the dissatisfaction. All right, honorable. It's important that we know there are citizens there who are, you know, anxious and they need responses to their issues. And I want to call upon you. Please throw out the vice of apathy, hold up to the constitution as it is stipulated, my brother said, Article 17.1i, the responsibility, the duty of the citizens is to combat corruption and fight against misuse of public resources. Come out unreservedly, condemn, shun, and denounce corruption. All right, Honorable, that constitution is in English, but to reach more people, maybe it should be translated. Sisi, maybe in 30 seconds, 15 seconds, give us your closing um, remarks. I think mine, when it comes to... Uh, mitigating issues of corruption is everyone's responsibility. I think it's such a big responsibility that cannot be left to government alone. So I think everyone has to jump on board. All right, thank you. And Vincent, 15 seconds as well. As the judiciary, we are taking the fight of corruption to the highest um, level that it requires and we are giving it priority. We are synchronizing our court systems. There have been a delay, especially where people go to appeal in the court of appeal. There has also been a delay in execution of the judgment, especially where there are orders to recover proceeds of crime. As a, an entity of government, as an arm of government, we are going to make it very harsh for people who are involved in corruption in, through asset recovery. It's not going to be based on, on conviction and sentence where you go and serve a term of imprisonment, but there will be mechanisms put in place to recover the property that you have accumulated through corruption. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And you who's watching us at home, please remember, it takes two to tango. So if you cannot find a right answer that you are not committing corruption, you're not helping in the fight against corruption. Thank you very much for joining me, Seboa Samuel Bunya, here on Face the Citizens. Until next time, see you.